why I put that in. Put that in the ground. I don't know where the fuck this root's coming from. That's something. That's something. That's hopeful, right? No, there's no fucking hope. Let's go ask Buster. Hey, what's up, man? Buddy, do you have, uh, how's your hope today? Do you have hope? Huh? Yeah? Come on, let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see the joy. Come on, Buster. Come on, Buster. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Ah, uh, see? Hi, buddy. No? Come on. What do I do? What did I do wrong? Come on. Come here, pal. Come here, buddy. What do you got? What do you got? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Uh-huh. Come on, pal. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. Good sounds. Good sounds. Buster. Buster. Have you been up all night thinking? Huh? No. No? Hey. All right, I'll be back. How about these? These rocks should help, right? Come on, rocks are helping. Feel the energy from the rocks. And these are very ornately carved walnut shells that I got on a trip to Beijing back in the day. Apparently, the wood carvers use them to practice on. Is that how you feel? We're all just crammed onto a nut. I can't hang out too long because I got nothing to say. Uh, but some of you seem to have gotten into the habit, so I'm making it a habit. I'm a little concerned about my, uh, brain Meh. how's yours oh how's your brain good <sighs> people are looking out people want to see the cholo jesus good morning cholo jesus Poems, huh? I didn't prepare for the poems. I'm not prepared. I could go get them. What are we doing out here, man? My brain keeps trying to make things okay so I can deal with every day, but every day it's a challenge for my brain to make things okay. Physically, I'm fucked. Chest is tight. Stomach hurts brain is pounding against the inside of my face. I believe I'm holding grief in that I need to let out. Maybe that'll happen on Saturday. Something's building up. I guess that is the... That is the uh, liability of being um, 
sensitive and self-centered is that when shit is going down you feel it and when there's nothing you can do to make that shit better you feel that and the inside of your body becomes a fucking liability to the outside good morning I don't smoke pot um so if you've never been here or you don't know who I am and you're like, what's this? You know, go away. Got no patience for the same old questions. I guess I could just turn off the feed of people. Yeah, that's fucking television. You're going to judge me? Are you getting better quality entertainment on the fucking Tonight Show? <laughs> no. Everybody's doing the same thing. I, um, you know, people who keep asking me to smoke pot, you know, I, I'm not going to get too upset, but see, um, they're just stupid and annoying and simple and don't have much else to say and they think they're being cute. That's that kind of troll. And then the other kind is like, let's make him mad. It's just, go away, leave us alone. talk to the nice peeps. That's ultimately what happens, isn't it? Is there a guy like me, I get. I like getting worked up. I like the anger buzz. So when I lock into people that are getting, that make me angry, the nice people are like, why do you, there's so many of us out here that are just here to have fun and be fun and, and you know, feel the feels. Why do you focus on the monsters? Because I've been fighting monsters my whole life. Why do I give them energy? Because they give me energy. It's not good. It's not the good kind of energy. No one would go hiking with me today. Let your love be your strength. <laughs> okay. I'll do that now. God, if I could let my love be my strength. I can just be that way, just like open up the heart and let it be and let life move through me. Wouldn't that be something? I used to be a monster. I know monsters. I'm half monster. Don't you get it? I know my monster really well. I mean, a lot of you out there, I think you know me pretty well. I mean, you know me well enough. I'm old and Ultimately, my monster lost the battle. And, you know, but I have to deal with him on the reg. I, um, no one will go hiking with me today, so I'm probably going solo, which is fine. I kind of need that sometimes. Live, laugh, love. Yes. See, my... My brain keeps trying to normalize shit because I feel a little detached. Come up to Southeast Alaska. We are a collection of monsters some days. A monsoon, others only sighing mist. You know, I, um, I, um, I lived in Alaska as a child. Do many of you know that? I lived in Anchorage, Alaska as a child, and I have some bizarre memories of it. 69, 70, 71, 69, I think, yeah, through 72, like two and a half years. And uh, I, I remember it. Kinda. Where haven't I lived? I haven't lived that many places. 
Grew up in Albuquerque, lived in Boston, lived in New York, lived in San Francisco, lived in L.A. That's it. Um, yeah, we lived in Anchorage, Alaska when my dad was in the Air Force. And I guess we took this walk, me and this guy with a, um, with a cleft palate named Chris. He was my friend. We set out one day and walked all the way along the inlet to the ocean. I don't even know what that means. Maybe someone in Anchorage knows what that means, but it was 69. So there were still all these mounds of rubble from the 63 earthquake down by the inlet. And him and I, I mean, I must have been fucking what? Six or seven years old. And we just started walking. We walked all the way to where the inlet met the ocean. And I just remember that there were these ice flows. The entire ocean was just broken ice. And there were some teenagers, some grown-up kids there cooking hot dogs, and they gave me and Chris a hot dog. And then uh, the police showed up with our parents, and I was hit. I was grabbed by the arm, hard by my father, and hit. And then Chris was taken away, apparently when a couple of 70-year-olds disappear for a journey down the inlet to the ocean to eat hot dogs with big kids. That needs to be a traumatizing experience. Well, it was amazing. I mean, it ha I have the memory. I think the greatest memory was like being up on there's a railroad bridge, as I recall, but I might be getting this all fucking wrong. But I mean, is it possible that the entire ocean was just large chunks of ice? off the coast of Anchorage at some point? I think so. I just remember those kids leaving the fire going, giving us hot dogs with no rolls, but it was okay. Because, you know, they were like the hot dogs of freedom. Um, back when kids actually went on journeys. Yeah, man. This is not cold brew. I drink my hot coffee in a pint glass. Dig it. Welcome aboard. section, not the entire ocean. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the no rules details. Do I have good memories of Albuquerque? Yeah, I have a lot of different memories of Albuquerque. I have, like, elementary school memories. I have junior high memories. I have high school memories. How many machines are we going to get going this morning? People are just going along like life is fucking normal. I guess I am too. I feel so fucking disconnected from anything anybody else is doing. Entertainers and whatnot. Is there a whole world going on without me? Am I missing something? Are people out there having a good time? Is there normalcy in the world? Are my assumptions incorrect that everybody's struggling the same way? Or is it everybody's just sort of like, don't tell Mark... But we've all gone back to work. Is that happening? Um, any stories of the woods outside of Albuquerque? Are there woods outside of Albuquerque? I just remember, man, driving around, drinking fucking beers chugging Southern chugging Jack Daniels remember the girl who showed me how to set a shot of Southern Comfort on fire in the cap of the Southern Comfort for a flaming shot you gotta be careful not to melt the plastic cause that's not part of it burning your fucking lips with a piece of melted plastic that's still hot that sticks to it you'll remember that shot I remember driving up into the hills, driving up Old 14, past Madrid, past the prison, into Santa Fe, driving up to Taos. I remember driving 10 hours to Denver, Colorado for Sunday Jam 2. Sunday Jam 2, man. That was fucking... The Rockets, who did a cover of 
hopefully would not so well. The rockets, the cars, UFO, Ted Nugent and Hart, I think, was the lineup. Is that possible? Mile High Stadium. Sunday Jam 2, I think it was. We drove 10 hours in two cars. I drove, I drove my ship round Dotson B210 uh, with Dave Bishop in the passenger seat. And Chris Fisher drove his 72 Maverick with Andy Perot in the fucking passenger seat. And we were so fucked up, man. No ELO, UFO. This is a crazy lineup. Didn't quite make sense, did it? It's hit makers, I guess. But I'd gotten all this food from the Posh Bagel where I worked, dressing, sandwiches, and everything. We ended up just having a massive food fight in between the two cars driving up there. I stopped at the car wash. And then uh, Andy took acid and it just became a disaster. Some drunk girl threw up on our stuff. Yeah. Good times. New Mexico memories. Yeah, boy. Where's Michael Shanker? I don't know. Ask Dean Delray. You're asking the wrong guy. The Posh Bagel. Come on, you guys. Really? Do I still talk to Coop? Not really. <clears throat> I mean, it's nothing personal. He doesn't live here anymore. It felt like that friendship never really fully took off. But we're not not friends. I like Coop. I like his work. You had a Datsun B210 wagon. Datsun B210 was my first car. I wrecked it very quickly after I got it. Combing my hair in the rear view mirror. Some asshole decides he's got to stop in front of me to take a turn. What the fuck? I like that first Pogues album. Ray Le Montaigne. I had his first record. It was okay. I didn't listen to it over again. The Posh Bagel was a restaurant across from University of New Mexico on Central Avenue. It was like it's Central and... Uh, Harvard, maybe? Back in the day, when I was in high school, I worked there. They called me the Bagel Boy at the guitar shop next door. I managed the place when I was in high school. The guy who owned it was a guy named Eddie Waxman, this annoying Jew that was kind of half a hustler, a little bit of a blow monkey. It was a weirdo fucking place. All the fucking college kids worked there. That's where I kind of got educated about everything. Lost my virginity to a waitress from there. Learned a lot about drugs and things and homeless people and bagels and grown kids. It was right next to the guitar shop and around the corner from the general store, which was a head shop. Natural Sounds, which was a huge reused record store run by sort of an asshole. And right down the street, two blocks away from Frontier in the Living Batch. Rum, Sodomy, and the Lash. Yeah, love that record. Eddie Waxman died, I think, of uh, aneurysm. Years later, he lost a place. He overextended. He opened a bar. I think he got into trouble with people. We used to cater concerts. He got into that racket, and I think he got into some low-level blow dealing. And, um, like, we were backstage. I was backstage for Rush. I had to go get Alex Leifson, a fucking fan, at Eddie's house because it was too hot in his dressing room and he needed to practice. And that spurred on a lifelong resentment of Rush. Worked backstage at Journey, Toto. These were not great times. <laughs> wow, that, those three. What, what bad backstage experiences. I worked backstage at Toto, Journey, and Rush. Mm, nah, and I fucking missed the Willie Nelson. Bagels and Blow, he should have called it that. But yeah, he overextended, opened a bar, ran it into the ground somehow, ended up managing, I think, Caliente Cab Company in New York, and then I just heard that he died. Um, I, yeah. 
You listen to Wilson Pickett, something within me, because of what I said yesterday, right? That groove? The fucking heavy sadness to it, man. God, if I could use some more... Uh... Has Frontier gone downhill? The last couple times I've been there before the plague, it was okay. It seemed like Frontier. It's just much bigger than it used to be. You know, that where Frontier was, it was just that one, that room where you walk into, that was it. And then, like, two of the next places were the Living Batch bookstore before he moved around the corner. The heaviness, I tell you that. Ooh, the heaviness. My mom is watching. Any chance Neil Young would return for a pod? I doubt it. I already voted. Um, I voted, like, the day after I got the ballot. Which means I don't have to watch any of this garbage. I didn't have to watch it before, but now it's just sports to frighten people. Sports for the frightened. A town hall with the candidates. Spectacle for the frightened. Fucking... Who won? Who cares? The world is ending. We need new management. Change the management, please. Got a headache. Face is fucking pressure in my face. Chest is tight. I'm not, not doing the guest thing. Uh, I already answered the Sukkot question yesterday. Hey, good morning, Michigan. Right on. Hey, Australia. Welcome. I think everybody here is voting. Uh, I don't know. What would I say to Neil Young again? I mean, that was a difficult conversation to begin with. It worked out okay, ultimately. But it's not like, you know, we got along so great, we're going to have a second conversation that's going to be... He's not easy to talk to. I mean, what do you think? You think what I do is easy? Oh, I'm a fucking astronaut. I start talking to somebody. I don't know where it's going to go. I'm in outer space. There's no controls. There's only suggestions. There's only fucking ideas. Seattle. Dayton. Right on. Um, Israel. Wow. I feel like I upset all of Israel. With a casual conversation with Seth Rogen. I, I upset the entire state of Israel. An astronaut and a cowboy. Am I? I don't know. I watched some cowboy movies. I watched a good cowboy movie last night. Now I don't remember what it's called. I can't figure it out. I'm doing a little Jimmy Kahn research. I'm going to talk to Jimmy Kahn tomorrow. To an 80-year-old Jimmy Kahn. One of the great starkers. Um, Mount Washington all the way over there huh Brattleboro Vermont Tuscaloosa Alabama vote in blue good for you Birmingham I like Birmingham um, interview Hamilton Canada I'd have to do it like uh, in the morning when it when when it's coming down <laughs> Uh, Nova Scotia, sweet. I watched. Uh, I watched an amazing, kind of an amazing movie last night. Torino, Italy. What what goes on there? Is that where they make the candy? Vancouver. I wish I was in Vancouver, Maryland. Nazareth, PA, home of Martin guitars. I don't have a Martin, but that's good. Lexington, originally, originally from Wayne, New Jersey. I lived in Wayne, New Jersey. Am I going to ask James Kahn about Trump? Probably not. I'm probably going to talk to James Kahn about what he does. Wouldn't that be more interesting? Isn't it dumb that people want to drain controversy out of people for no reason? It's like, I think that clickbait has actually, it's like a, a, a virus. And it's the way people think now. Hey, you're going to say something to make some shit happen? You're going to say something that's going to cause controversy? 
because controversy is truth. No, it's not. Clickbait brain. That's right next to the part of the brain. There's clickbait and then there's the resume branding. Are you going to say something that's going to fuck shit up? What do you like, this or that? What's your top five garbage list? Do you have a top five garbage list? Tell me what to think. Make me feel. Hey, Seattle. Um... I went way back with him last night. I watched uh, a Francis Ford Coppola movie. Um, The Rain People. Which I never even fucking knew about. And it's a great fucking movie. Um, I watched The Rain People and I watched the one... I feel like that's not my nose. No Kleenex? That's risky. Um, Rain People was a great flick. It's like 1967. Must be Coppola's second movie or third movie. And um, Sophia was on Armchair Expert. So what? I had her years before that. Um, not that we're competing. Dax does a pretty good me. So, you think Thief is his best? That's hard to find, man. I wanted to watch it. So I watched Rain People, which is great. And I watched one, an Alan J. Pakula movie, a Western uh, with, it's kind of a Western with Jane Fonda and Farnsworth and Jimmy Kahn and Jason Robart. That's fucking... That was kind of a great movie. Can someone tell me what what it's called? James Conn was in Apocalypse Now. Um, So I went way back with Jimmy to see what he was like in his mid to late 20s. He was in El Dorado with Mitchum and Wayne, which I might watch tonight, just so I can fucking get a sense of the emotional arc. Robarts was great, man. Can someone tell me the name of that movie? Somebody must fucking know the name of that movie. Comes a Horseman. Thanks, Zach. I, uh, I, I know I didn't really remember it. I kind of remembered it from you know looking at the ads, but then what is Rain People? You gotta watch that movie. It's Shirley Knight, James Caan, and Duvall, and it's about this woman, Shirley Knight, a young woman who's married, and and she finds out she's pregnant but she doesn't she doesn't know who she is and doesn't want to be married and she just drives off in the station wagon across country without a real plan because she saw her whole life flash before her and she didn't like it kind of so she ends up picking up this hitchhiker which is James Kahn who she doesn't realize uh, is severely uh, intellectually handicapped from a football accident and she's sort of stuck with him and they go to, he's a, he got hurt in a college football game. And then they just keep driving and she gets pulled over by Robert Duvall in Nebraska. And then it's like, it's one of the best 70s movies I've ever seen. And I didn't even know anything about it. How did I watch Rain People? I think it's on Hulu. I think it's in there somewhere. But Shirley Knight is great in the space that he gives all the actors. And that Pakula movie is great, Comes the Horseman. Uh, the, the space on that's great. I think he must have made it right after All the President's Men, and he wanted to get outdoors. It was like, it's literally the film he made after All the President's Men, and it's just expansive Arizona and Colorado and horses and a lot of space. And Jane Fonda is a fucking genius. I think I really wanted to see what Jim... James Kahn was made out of early on because he kind of gets pigeonholed as Sonny and a couple other roles but like he really has range I might watch The Killer Elite maybe do a little Sam Peckinpah festival this is helping me out you guys Lewis Black is on the show today it's fucking yard work man I don't even know what that machine is
It's not my gardener. Uh, Jane Fonda is definitely a superhero. That was one of the uh, exciting, most exciting conversations. Yeah, I used to do Peckinpah Film Festival once a year. But I have not watched The Killer Elite. The Killer Elite was not part of my Peckinpah Film Fest. It's a later Peckinpah. It's Duvall and Khan. I think, yeah, Khan gets double-crossed or set up or, or actually shot by Duvall's character and it blows his kneecap off and his elbow off and he's left in a locker room. And then, as I recall, Khan learns martial arts with a cane. I'm not answering have I interviewed questions. You can go to uh, wtfpod.com slash interviews. Use whatever options you have at your disposal to maintain your sanity without hurting yourself or other people or becoming lost in your mind. The last couple weeks have really fucking tested me, man. What was the other one I said? El Dorado. That's an old Western. It's like a later Western, I think. Maybe, is it a Ford or... Is it Ford or... I don't know. But it's a John Wayne and uh, Robert Mitchum movie. And it was like James Caan's first real role, I think. It's like from the mid-60s. Yeah, mind your mind so they don't mind your mind. Whoa. What's the best joke? I'd like to keep laughing. The gambler's great. Toback script. That guy's a, kind of a weirdo. I always watch The Unforgiven if I come upon it. Just for that fucking scene. We've all got it coming. I suppose. <laughs> I did watch the uh, second uh, uh, comedy store doc. I did some cooking yesterday. I sauteed some uh, green cabbage and onions in ghee, straight up. Put the ghee in, put the onions in, put the cabbage in, salt, that's it. It's really good. High Plains Drifter I have seen, not lately. High Noon, yes, I've seen that. That's a great movie. I'll see you in hell, William Money. (laughs) Fucking Hackman, right? Fucking Hackman. God damn it. Those guys, man. Hackman and Duvall, those character actors from that era... Hackman's the best. I did not make my own ghee. Ever smoked a cabbage? Hmm. No. I can. Hostiles. Hostiles. Yes, I like that movie. That's that guy, um, Cooper, directed that. I met that guy. Is that his name? Who directed Hostiles? He also directed Black Mass. I sat next to him on an airplane. Harry and Walter go to New York. It's okay. Gene Hackman's the greatest man. Oh, Gene Hackman and The Firm? For sure. For sure, but... Ugh. I don't love the conversation. I mean, people like it, but I don't love it. Um... But yeah, the firm is good. That had a that had a big director too. Did was it, like some of those Grisham movies had big director. Was the firm a Sidney Pollock movie? Scott Cooper, yeah. That guy's solid, man. That guy can fucking lay it down. He's got fucking big swinging director dick. Fucking takes on the big shit. Intense guy. I just remember he was sitting next to me 
reading Willie Nelson's autobiography, nodding his head like he, like Willie was talking to him, and I was just looking at him. He's listening to music. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? And then, like as always on an airplane, you can sit next to somebody for five hours, and in the last fourteen minutes of the flight, you, you start talking and you cram it all in. It's a weird phenomenon that happens on airplanes. Yeah, Firm as Pollock. Yeah, right. I like that movie a lot. I also like that Coppola Grisham. I like the uh, Rainmaker with uh, DeVito and uh, Mickey Rourke, Matt Damon, Claire Danes. That's Coppola. That was pretty good. There's a James Caan movie that got lost in the mix. It was a Coppola movie. I remember seeing it. I don't remember why. The Gardens of Stone. I was so excited about it, but it was like a, uh, it didn't seem to land. But I think it was when Coppola's son was killed. I'm not sure. Uh, is this going anywhere? I don't feel well, man. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's COVID. I'm just hoping it's not the end of whatever. Come on, dude. Put the fucking machine away. Pollock was... You know, he's great in Michael Clayton. How many times can I watch Michael Clayton? It seems that... You know what I figured out? Rain, that's funny. There's a lot of rain. Yeah. I haven't eaten yet. No. It might be the allergies. Yeah. Um... was awesome in Husbands and Wives. That scene when they leave that party? Hmm. Michael Clayton, though. People are fucking incomprehensible. My favorite part of what? Uh, uh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh. Uh. What's more annoying? <laughs> oh, ah, ah, me? Ah. <laughs> What's more annoying, me or the wee book? Oh, oh. You're not seeing that on the Tonight Show. I think that was yeah, it was a chant exactly. I was I turned the fucking annoyance into a meditation. That's what we did there. We took something tedious and annoying, grating, and through magic, through alchemy, made it into something transistent. Transistent. Is that even a word? No, transcendent. Is transistent a word? <laughs> we will call that the leaf blower meditation. That will be the first one in my book of meditations. Paul Rudd and I did it on the podcast. Yes, it's, it's matching the things... that are destructive with a counterbalance of transcendence. But I don't think that's really... Transistor, yes, I know, but not transistent. Is, is it everybody's first day here? What do you mean? This is 
it's Topo Chico water. I don't know. I just like it. You know, some people, it's just mineral water, but I like it. I don't know how much different it is than other mineral water. It feels like the, the bubbles are tighter. Um, I do have one. Sorry. I'm having nose problems. I got a hair in there now. This is the television you were looking for. You're not seeing that. You're not seeing that on the big shows. You're not seeing a guy clean his nose with his viewers. I got to trim the hair. I think the bubbles are tighter. George Siegel seems forever 70s. Yeah, he's, he was okay. He's pretty limited, but he was pretty good. Um... Yeah, nose hairs and ear hairs are a problem with the age. It is the content you signed up for. All right, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna split here, because if I don't go hike soon, it's gonna get really fucking hot, and I guess I'm going on my own. My lungs feel weird. I'm gonna assume it's, I don't know what it is. I'm not getting a new Tom Petty box set. I can't get any more box sets that I don't listen to. I have the other two Tom Betty Petty box sets and the live Tom Petty box set, and I listen to none of them. Pacino and Dog Day Afternoon is fucking transcendent, for sure. For sure. John Casale, too. Is that how you say his name? Great. I did not have any dreams that I remember. Santini is good, but it's not my favorite Duval movie. Tender Mercies is the fucking Duval movie. I don't need all fucking 12 records of all the studio outtakes of Funhouse. I think I already have it. I think it was available on CD before. The Funhouse Sessions, I think I have that. I have not heard the new Sturgill Bluegrass record. But he's, boy, he's just throwing those curveballs at Simpson. What's he going to do next? This is like a soul country record. This is like a rock country record. This is like slightly psychedelic country record. Now going straight to the old shit. How is it? I haven't seen Breakout in a while. Any suggestions for an uplifting light movie? Uplifting? Yeah, watch The Fighter. I just watched that. Wow, Tender Mercy's a killer, man. I like Elvis Costello, sure. I love Sturgill Simpson. He used to text me occasionally, just pictures of guitars. <laughs> like gu guitars I couldn't afford. All right, you guys. No, don't, I'm not, I don't like the traveling Wilburys. I don't like, a, um, I don't like the Jeff Lynn sound. Oh, thanks for putting me on to Dylan's Infidels. Yeah, that's a good record. The rhythm section, that's a, that's an odd record. Fucking Mick Taylor, Mark Knopfler, uh, Sly Dunbar, Robbie Shakespeare. What a weird band. But it's sort of, there's some great stuff on there. Yeah, Carter's in Nashville. I went in there. Do you want to play that guitar? Sure. Hey, this feels really good. How much is it? $30,000. Oh, well, I think that's, I don't have that on me. I liked some of yeah, the first couple of records. I still like him. Um, 
Did I listen to the album you sent me? No, I have to go get it. It's probably at the P.O. box. Which album was it? I'm having a hard time remembering. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, it's at the office. I opened it, right. I got, I'll, I'll listen to it. Sorry. Sun Ra. You have a lot of Sun Ra records. You can only take it in small doses. We did Buster at the beginning. I could go do it again. Ennio Morricone film scores. Have you listened to that John Zorn record of the Ennio Morricone uh, scores? That's a great record. I used to listen to that a lot. I forget what it's called, but it was John Zorn doing Ennio Morricone. I liked it. I check the P.O. box once a week, usually. Listen to much Vysotsky. I don't know who that is. Um, Yellow Tango. A little sleepy for me. I, I don't know enough about Dor- Dawes. I like Yellow Tango, but I don't. I don't listen to them a lot. Jim O'Rourke. Yes, I like that. I don't. I have one of his records. I don't know if it's the Insignificance record. Okay, I'll listen to it. Nick Drake, Joy Division, and New Order. Dear, that's it. What a happy morning. That's pretty fucking heavy way to start the day. Jesus Christ. Not a huge Santana fan. Okay. Love Brian Eno. A lot of Brian Eno. I'm a little into Built to Spill. Have a lot of John Fahey. Like it. I like that other guy, Robbie Bashko, better. The Big Gun Down, yeah. That's great. That's the John Zorn record of the Enio Morricone stuff. Judy Sill. Yeah, it's another happy way to start the day. (laughs) Oh, man. Sure. Devo. Yeah. I don't know who Jolie Holland is. Okay. I'll go get my keys and my water. What up? I'm leaving. That's what's up. Yes, I have heard the original version of I'm Shaking by Woody Willie, Willie, John. Oh, God damn it. Let's see. What are you waiting for me? Next stand-up special timeline? Fucking get real, dude. Let's see if the world survives. What's up, pal? People want to see you again. Are you going to do it? Huh? What's going on today? Yeah? What are you thinking? Yeah? Okay. What's up? Okay. Okay? Yeah? You want to go to the vet? So we can see if your kidney functions are good? Come on, give me something to worry about. Right? Right? Yeah. You almost died, buddy. Do you remember I saved your life? You're the $9,000 cat. Earn it. (laughs) Yeah. What? 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 Yeah. What's up? You're strange. You're strange. What was I going to do, buddy? I don't got no kids. I got no wife. I got no debt. And you were going to die. And I didn't think I would be the guy 
to keep dumping money into a cat whose kidneys were going bad because he ate something stupid, Buster. You ate a stupid thing. I don't even know what it is, but you ate something stupid. Yeah. And then I had to go visit you at the hospital. Remember? Huh? Do you? God damn it, talk to me. And somehow or another, we saved you. I don't know how much kidney you have. Do you? How much kidney do you have? Yeah? All right. Hi, Lynn. How long do I do this for? It's so sad. Should I talk to this guy? I look some dumb. Fucking more coffee. Do I need more coffee? These came in a box with uh, some other tincture of something and some other herb from Lynn's naturopath two days after she died. I don't think these would have saved her. What's up, pal? Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna go, you guys. For some reason, I enjoy just showing off my oysters. <laughs> it's oysters. Ceviche. Yammers. Good times. Good times. Junior Brown's okay. So, so he's sort of a novelty act, but he's pretty great. Okay. Enough of this nonsense. I will um, talk to you later. Now I'm all sad. All right. Bye.